right? So, um, you know, I manufacture uh, a widget. Other people have done that, but I do it at a, at a, at a, at a lower cost level, uh, and, and, and my competitiveness comes from low cost. Innovative entrepreneurship is science and technology-based, and it is uh, producing new products and new processes. And, and, and there, uh, you see some very interesting contrast between China and India. Basically, in India, almost all the entrepreneurial development comes from the demand side dynamics, market opportunities, and user innovations. Whereas in China, the entrepreneurship has occurred uh, as a function of both demand side development as well as direct supply side uh, 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 dynamics government support of R&D, uh, government support of uh, industrial development. Uh, China invests far more in R&D as compared with India. China has a far higher growth rate of uh, patents, uh, uh, both domestic patents and foreign patents as compared with uh, India. So China has this sort of both supply side and demand side dynamics, arguably India, uh, is weaker on the supply side and mostly is on the demand side. And then uh, my co-authors at MIT and I uh, have uh, been engaged in a research project to study scientific uh, production of scientific knowledge in China. We spent about uh, two years uh, uh, setting up a database of uh, 800,000 scientific papers uh, published by Chinese academics in Western referee uh, journals, uh, analyze the quantity of the publications as well as the quality of the publications. Uh, if, if I have time, I can share some of the very preliminary findings from that uh, research. So let me begin with uh, uh, an observation that they are uh, missing alternative uh, support mechanisms for innovative entrepreneurship. Uh, in China and India, not replicated. Re replicated entrepreneurship requires relatively few uh, conditions to succeed. You need, um, you, need a, you, need a, you need a smart person, you need some sort of shortages in the market uh, conditions, but innovative entrepreneurship has a higher uh, demand on the financial system, on the economic system, and by the way, on the political system uh, as well. Uh, so uh, my, my talk is mostly about innovative uh, entrepreneurship uh, rather than replicative uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, one problem uh, as compared with the United States is the lack of uh, early stage uh, financing. In the United States, uh, a lot of the early stage uh, entrepreneurial projects are funded by what is known as uh, the three Fs, right? friends, families, and foods. In China and India, uh, first of all, uh, Chinese and Indians are very smart. Uh, they don't become fools very, very easily. For the other, the wealth creation is, at least in China, is a relatively new phenomenon. And also there are tax and legal uh, hurdles toward uh, sort of family and friends financing model of uh, early stage uh, projects. There's no inheritance tax in China. Uh, in India, there is inheritance uh, tax uh, law, but, it is, uh, uh, but the enforcement is very uneven and uh, it's very complicated. For example, the enforcement of uh, inheritance tax in India depends on the religion that you have. Uh, whether you are Hindi or Muslim, the enforcement is different. Right? So you can imagine how complicated it is to uh, administer a law like that in a very complex country such as uh, India. Uh, although wealth creation in India uh, has a longer history as compared with China, essentially because India has a relatively uh, continuous history of capitalism, whereas in, in the case of China, uh, as uh, Dr. Tian uh, pointed out, the reforms only began in 1978, there was a period when Chinese uh, capitalism uh, was wiped out uh, between uh, 49 and 78. So this is a relatively new phenomenon in, in China. But in India, there's a longer history. But the problem in India is that India has many 
large commercial conglomerates, right, the large business houses, Tata, for example, uh, uh, Wipro, and these conglomerates tend to, when they fund new ventures, they tend to impose management controls on these new uh, projects, on these entrepreneurial projects. And one problem with large companies, and this is, about, by the way, is also true in the United States, when large companies impose strict managerial controls on new projects, those new projects tend to be very conservative, tend not to be very innovative. Right? And uh, this is why in India, some of the most exciting entrepreneurial projects co are coming from uh, new companies not affiliated with the old commercial houses. Right? If you look at Infosys, Infosys was founded in 1981. It was not related to Tata, to all these uh, big uh, business groups. So having these large commercial houses probably is beneficial in, 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 in certain uh, ways, but it is not beneficial as far as uh, starting new ventures is concerned. Uh, the other problem is that even though in China and India we, uh, we begin to see the rise of the private equity finance, uh, venture capital finance, but the problem there is that there's a size bias in favor of large projects. In China and in India, it's easier to raise $1 million than it is to raise $50,000. And that's because most of the early stage financing focuses on later stage projects. The early stage projects which require less money typically are not funded because of that focus. Right? So in China, the overwhelming number of the projects funded by venture capital are late stage projects, very close to IPO. Right? So by definition, those projects uh, are mostly about commercialization of existing product, existing technology, rather than about uh, uh, new and breakthrough technologies. So this is a true quote from uh, entrepreneur, uh, venture capitalists familiar with, in, with the India. Uh, in China, you see exactly the same thing as I, as I will show in the next slide. In India, it is easier to raise $2 million than it is to raise $200,000. In China, I actually have personal experience with this problem of, uh, of um, um, uh, uh, being difficult to raise a small amount of money. I'm helping an MIT scientist set up a business in China, and he has a very, very uh, good uh, technology uh, uh, that can be, uh, but it's, it's still during the R&D stage, uh, very early, uh, the patent is probably a year from, from now, maybe two years from now. It is very difficult to raise uh, the kind of capital. It's not a large amount of money, but it's very difficult to raise the kind of capital that, uh, that's required to proceed with his uh, uh, experiment. And we have some uh, more success with government than with uh, venture capital uh, uh, firms. Um, if you look at China, the early stage uh, finan uh, financing um, has actually fallen uh, in terms of the number of the deals uh, from about 25% in 2005 to now about 3 to 4% in 2008 and 2009. Uh, most of the uh, private placements focus on pre-IPO uh, stage uh, companies. And if you look at the length of time uh, between the venture capital uh, or private equity